the erratic action of the sluggo is probably the number one fish trigger. In other words, the lure acts a different way every time you touch it with your rod. And there's fish usually follow a lure and look for an opening, look for something to convince them that the lure is alive. And with sluggo's erratic action and with its random motion, you're bound to come across a trigger move if you just keep working the lure back to the boat. Sluggo looks very much like a dying or a weak bait fish. Uh, one of the things that makes it look most that way and most convincing is the fact that it rises on retrieve. We've all seen a sick fish come to the surface and then sink and struggle to the surface. And this is the only lure that I know of that sinks, but when you retrieve it, it rises to the surface and it'll actually squirt and jump out of the surface at times if you work it properly. Sluggo has the most realistic erratic action of any lure I've ever fished. Every time you pull it, it goes a different way, and it's, it's like a topwater, soft plastic jerk bait. With all the advantages and possibilities of a plastic worm. Whoa, here's a nice strike. Did you get it? I got it. There it is. Oh, right. Oh, yes. That thing didn't even hit the water. He's an acrobat. Come on, baby. You waited a good amount on that. That was about yeah. three, four seconds. Yep. And you can see the hook is buried in the roof of his mouth. And that has a lot to do with the way this lure is rigged and that it's exposed. When the, when the fish bites on this lure, it does the same thing as it does in the water, and it kind of settles in his mouth with the hook point riding up. And 90% of your fish will be hooked in the roof, and that's probably the best place to hook a bass. Uh, when rigging a sluggo, the general rule for rigging is to push the hook point into the nose until the barb disappears into the plastic, and then turn outward threading the hook through and popping it down over the eye. And now what you want to do is, is kind of snug that down on the bend of this hook, and that's why an offset hook works really well. Plus it helps to keel the bait. And then what you do is you use the length of the hook as a measure. And at the farthest point of the hook, the bend here, you draw an imaginary line straight through the lure. And that's where you want your hook point to go in, and you want it to exit exactly opposite where it goes in, 90 degrees to the lure. And this will help keep the lure real straight. And you want to try to get it right through the center of the lure. And this is uh, called Texposed Rigging. It has a lot of protection. The hook is keel weighted. The lure is keel weighted so that it, it almost always falls belly first. And the sides protect the hook point, yet it's exposed so you get good hooking. It's real important to keep the lure straight on the hook. If it's not straight on the hook, it'll cause a direction and the lure will just keep going to the left or the right or it'll keep making the same curve. If it's, if it's nice and straight, it'll have a real crazy action and go in all different directions. One of the best things about Sluggo is it's weedless, and uh, so that allows you to fish it virtually anywhere. It really shines in calm, clear water, and it also is very good in heavy weed beds. You can roll it across the top of the weeds or through cover, find any small opening in the cover, and use it like a twitch bait, and it's just deadly. It's very difficult to find a lure with the action of Sluggo that will allow you to fish in those tight situations. And whenever you're underwater, you never see one fish. You always see a bunch of them, but you almost always can only catch one. But with a sluggo, you're liable to catch half the school. The thing that really surprised me about the sluggo was that you could get five or six fish in a school to get interested in the lure. Usually, fish in a school are the ones we catch. Normally, there's a group of fish when you catch a fish, and what happens is you only catch one very active fish. With Sluggo, you can get five or six fish out of the school. As a matter of fact, with, in this particular experiment, you could pull it away from one fish, and another one would grab it, and then another, et cetera. And the same fish would grab it two or three times if you pull it away from them. So it was really amazing that way.
you know, a lot of people confuse it with a worm because it's made out of this similar type plastic, and it's really not a worm, and it shouldn't be thought of as a worm. Uh, it should be thought of more as a soft stick bait, or kind of a cross between that, between a, a minnow imitation lure with all the advantages and possibilities of a plastic worm. You can work it on a surface, drop it down, sweep it fast to make the tail undulate, you can throw either size lure on a casting rod, and you can use the big one on lines up to 20, 25 pound test, and that's with no weight. The lure itself, the, the six inch lure with no weight, weighs about five eighths of an ounce. The important thing with, uh, with working it is to keep an open mind and to use it as many different ways as you, as you can think of. You know, you can use it on the surface, you can use it on the bottom. It just depends on how long you want to wait and how long you pause between everything. See, I'll, lots of times I'll work the bait on the surface and then I'll let it go down a few feet and I keep changing the direction. You know, the, the lure's direction is changing, the lure's depth is changing. Good healthy fish.